In this video, I want to break down some really cool visual effects that will just give life and energy to your music video and will turn those very like dull and boring, you know, tripod shots and just make them a lot more energetic and a lot more exciting. Now, one of the most important things to do when you're editing to a very like fast paced um, trap song is you want to edit to the beat. And here are little tips and tricks to just, you know, keep in mind when you're editing the beat. The first thing is creating a gap clip. So as you can see, this is just a gap clip. All you would do is click on option W to create a gap clip. And all a gap clip does is it basically just avoids the magnetic timeline so you can see I just have markers here with the different beats so the gap clip can be really helpful for example if the song gets you know out of line or messed up it's really helpful to just easily line the songs up with the actual markers on the gap clip that's what I do I know a lot of people don't like using the gap clip but I find using the gap clip is really helpful when editing to the beat now another thing to keep in mind is when you're editing kind of like just editing to the beat is you basically want to go frame by frame if you got to play the video all, all as a whole it's gonna be hard to hear with the actual beats are so what you want to do is you want to go frame by frame so if you watch the audio meters I already have the markers placed you're basically going to go frame by frame until you hear like a pop or a spike in the audio so watch the audio meters as you can see there we go there's just a spike in the audio so you're kind of just going frame by frame until you hear a loud pop or a loud spike in the audio and all you're going to do is you're going to place a marker so just play, uh, press M on the keyboard to create a marker so create a gap clip if you want you don't always have to and you're just going to go frame by frame and then obviously turn your volume all the way up until you hear like a pop or a spike in the audio and that's where the actual you know, beat hit is so always editing the beat is very important especially when you're editing to very fast paced you know trap uh, songs Editing the beat is really important if you don't especially on the big hits it's just gonna it's just gonna seem a little bit off okay the first effect I want to go over is this really cool shake effect so if I play this video as you can see it's a very kind of like dull stable shot both these shots are kind of like very like obviously they're, they're, they're good footage but I'm just saying the footage is kind of like very just kind of stable and just doesn't have a lot of energy well there's two effects you can use to create this effect and that is the earthquake effect and the earthquake pro now the earthquake effect right here is the one that comes natively in final cut with the earthquake pro is a plugin that you can buy so you can either use the earthquake pro or the earth or just the default um, earthquake effect one costs money then one just comes default and final cut so if I click on the clips I'm gonna click on the clip I'm just gonna uh, increase the amount a little bit I'm just gonna increase the layers then I'm gonna head over to this video where the earthquake pro is let's turn up the twist horizontal vertical shake layers and then random speed obviously you know do can you know fine-tune the settings I just want to show you a basic example so now if I play the video as you can see there we go see now the footage has a lot of shake to it and that just looks a little bit more interesting obviously I probably turned it up a little too high so fine-tune it to make it look even nicer but there you go that's how you add this really cool shake effect either use the earthquake effect which comes with Final Cut Pro as a default effect or you can buy the earthquake pro which gives you a little more settings and it's gonna look a little bit different so obviously you'll make your decision you know whether or not you want to spend money or whether you don't the earthquake effect by default is fine but if you want a little bit of a different effect the earthquake pro definitely gives you that as well as you can see you have so many more controls on the earthquake pro so of course make the decision but just apply the earthquake effect and adjust the settings to your liking and you will create a really cool fake camera shake effect in Final Cut. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool blur transition. Now this transition is really nice on a beat hit. So if I head over here to Zoom, a zoom Blur, I'm going to head over here to All and go to Blur and I'm just going to apply the Zoom Blur plug and apply it onto the adjustment layer. Now I'm just going to have it affect this clip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the settings and I'm going to increase the settings as far as I want or as high as I want and let me center it somewhere on Yeet's face. So we're going to go to the beginning of the adjustment layer and then turn it all the way up, place a keyframe on a mount and then we're going to go forward one two three frames or, or how, however many you want I want to take the amount and turn it all the way down to zero so if I play the video frame by frame as you can see it creates this really cool zoom blur transition this is really cool anytime there's like a beat hit so you can see there we go there's this really cool zoom blur effect the next one I'll go over is this really cool like directional blur so this is kind of transitioning in between two clips so head over here to blur take directional blur and then apply it onto the adjustment layer take the amount all the way down place a keyframe then go forward as many frames as you want so in this case I'm gonna go forward one two three frames right in between the two clips and then I'm gonna take the amount and just crank it all the way up as high as I want then I'm gonna go forward one two three frames and then I'm gonna take the amount and turn it all the way down to zero so it creates this really cool if I go frame by frame this really cool like directional blur transition again this is really good on like loud you know, beat hits so I play the video as you can see there we go that just looks really cool it just is a, a nice little effect and again looks really good when you line it up with the beat 
The next effect I want to go over is this really cool digital camera effect. So I'm going to kind of like just pick a random spot. I'm going to place a keyframe on scale and position. And I'm just going to go forward five frames. I'm going to go forward one, two, three, four, five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the scale to as big as I want. So let's say 180. Take the Y axis, move it down. And then I'm going to take the X axis and just move it over. So it kind of just in the middle of the clip just kind of like digitally like zooms in or punches in. So if I play the clip frame by frame, as you can see, it just digitally zooms in. So as you can see if I play the video something like this as you can see that just looks really cool now you can see a little bit of the black back the uh, the black background so we just kind of increase uh, move the y-axis up but it's a really cool effect as you can see it just digitally zooms in it's a very cool effect to kind of give a little bit of emphasis on the person there you go as you can see that's just a really cool effect it just digitally zooms in and you don't have to do that manually you can do it all in you know post-production so it's a really cool effect I can also right click and click on show video animations and then I can have your transform go to position and then I can right click on the keyframes and change it to linear or smooth so if you want to you know if the, the, the smooth effect looks a little weird you can have a more linear and kind of like a, a straight effect play the video there we go it just creates this really cool digital zoom in or punch in effect now if you're doing any kind of like keyframe animations, it's always important to add some sort of motion blur. So I'm going to add, add moderate motion blur too, and I'm just going to place it over top where I actually have the digital camera zoom in. Anytime you do any kind of keyframe animation, you want to add some sort of motion blur. All this is going to do is going to add blur to the animation, smooth it out, and make it look a lot nicer. So if I play the video, there we go, you have this really cool digital like punch in or zoom in effect right there. It's a really cool effect and just adds so much energy to the video. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool like color change like kind of strobe effect so I just have an adjustment layer I'm gonna do is head over here to all and I'm just gonna type in a hue and saturation so I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect now I, I, can't, I can't remember if I mentioned this already but all these kind of like purple things on top of the clip are adjustment layers so if I head over here to an adjustment layer all I do is just took this title plugin and place it on top of the clip it's a free plugin and I'll make sure to put the link down in the description below just in case you're wondering what these purple things are they're just adjustment layers so I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect I'm just gonna kind of take the hue and turn it to maybe something like blue and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the adjustment layer the adjustment layer with the hue and saturation effect paste it two times and then I'm just going to take the color and then change it to something different so we want something like it'd be like a red and then maybe this one we can just go over here and then head to the hue if we want changes to like a green effect so as you can see you just have these really cool like hue effects and I kind of creates this really cool kind of color change or kind of color strobe effect so if I play the video that just looks so cool there's like punch in effect and these are this really cool digital punch in effect and these really cool kind of like color strobe effect this next effect I want to go over is this really cool kind of like random camera handheld effect. So if I play the video, this is what it looks like. It's just a normal shot. But maybe you want kind of like some like random camera, like handheld shake effect. Well, there is a plugin or an effect in Final Cut called the handheld effect. And if I just place it onto the clip, it's kind of a little bit random. So let's just increase the shakiness and kind of increase the distance. There's not a great way of controlling this effect. It's kind of just kind of like random camera handheld effect. So if I play the video, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it just gives the video a little more life and makes it kind of look like it's handheld so this is an effect you're definitely not going to use everywhere but it's definitely a really cool effect to just be aware of if you kind of want your camera to have a little bit of like handheld um, shake and you just forgot to do it you know actually in camera you can have it give it in like a little handheld shake in post-production video editing the effect is just called handheld it's already pre-built in a final cut this next effect i want to go over is this really cool screen pump effect so what you want to do is you want to find where the actual beat drop is so the beat drop is right here and i'm going to go backwards uh, two frames so one two and i'm going to go forward two frames you're just going to add an adjustment layer and you're going to place a keyframe on scale now what you're going to do is going to go for one two frames right where the actual beat hit is and then you're going to take the scale we'll change it to something like 160 so you, you have it scale the highest at where the actual beat drops so let's go forward one two frames and then we'll take this scale and we'll change it all the way down to i think 111 i can't remember exactly where it started or just 100 so you're basically just going to reset actually we'll change that to that was at 111 let's change that to 100 and you're basically just resetting the key, the um, scale so if I play the video back as you can see one two zooms all the way up and then one two and then zooms back into place so it's a really cool kind of like screen pump effect there's a, a really loud like beat it's just a really cool effect so let's play the video as you can see there we go that's just so cool it just kind of like zooms in or punches in and creates this really cool like screen 
um, pump effect. So that's a really cool effect. And remember, anytime you do any kind of these animations, keyframe animations, add some motion blur. In this case, we'll do moderate motion blur too. Make sure you put the motion blur on top of where the actual animation is happening, not just in a random spot. It has to be on top of where the animation is happening. And now it's going to add some blur to that animation. And there you go. That just looks so cool and adds so much energy to the video. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool, simple zoom transition. So go to the end of the clip and then go back three frames. So go back one, two, three frames. So just gonna go back three frames. We're gonna place a keyframe on scale and then we're gonna go to the end of the clip. So one, two, three, go to the end of the clip and then take the scale and take it all the way. We'll do like 220. So basically the last three frames of the video, as you can see, it's just gonna zoom in and it kind of simulates this very simple, clean zoom in transition. So let's play the video and if you watch the clip, as you can see, there we go. It's just really simple. It just zooms out or zooms in. There you go. You have a really clean transition. And again, make sure you add some motion blur just to help sell the effect. The next effect I'm gonna go over is this really cool kind of like locked on rotation effect. So let's head over here to view, go on show horizon horizon and we're just going to enable the transform and then as you can see here is the anchor point we're going to head over here to anchor and we're going to drag the anchor on where we want to be centered so in this case we're going to do the nose so as you can see here's the anchor point and we're trying to put the anchor point this little like blue circle this blue line we just want to make sure the nose so you, you don't want to adjust anything else you simply just want to adjust the anchor so now we have the anchor locked onto his nose so this little icon is the anchor point so now it's going to be rotating around there so what you want to do is let's zoom out to like 25 percent and we can kind of like and we'll leave the, the horizon grid on now we're going to crank the scale all the way up to something like i don't know six seven hundred and let's just kind of test the rotation so we're going to rotate the image around and make sure there's no black and then as you can see that looks really good so we can kind of decrease the rotation the scale a little bit and you want to kind of test the rotation make sure there are no black edges so we want to increase the scale just a little bit and there it goes. So you just want to make sure it's scaled in enough that you don't see any of the black background. So we're going to do is head to the beginning, place a keyframe on scale, go to the end of the clip, and then take the rotation. In this case, we'll do 400 degrees. So as you can see, this video is just rotating to 400 degrees, and there we go. And then you can see because we put the anchor point on his nose, it's rotating around the anchor point. So if I zoom in and play the video, this is probably a little zoomed in. So as you can see, there we go. It's just rotating around his nose. So you just basically, all you're doing is kind of resetting the anchor point and having the anchor point where you want to rotate around. Key from the rotation, there you go. There's a really cool locked on rotation effect. The last effect I want to go over is this really cool zoom sequence effect. So I changed the duration to six frames of this clip. I'm going to place a keyframe on scale and then I'm going to go to the end of the clip. And I'm just going to increase the scale to like, it be like something like 220%. So the entire duration of this clip is just zooming in. So you can see the entire duration of that clip is just zooming with a simple scale animation. Now we can copy this command C, select all these, shift command V, and we're going to paste the, you could basically just paste the keyframes. So instead of like individually keyframing all of them, you can just paste the keyframes. And then as you can see, there we go. There is a really cool like, lockdown rotation effect. And then you have this really cool zoom sequence effect. And basically it's as simple as you're basically just having the entire duration of the clip zoom in. So as you can see, the entire duration of this clip is zooming in, this entire clip is zooming in and just creates this really cool zoom sequence. So it's a really cool effect by kind of like recap videos, like recapping events, but you want it really fast paced. It's a really cool, really clean effect. And obviously make sure you add some motion blur on top of this, as well as you want to make sure you add motion blur um, on top of this rotation animation. Again, anytime you're doing keyframing, always make sure you place the motion blur on top of wherever the keyframing is happening. It's gonna add blur and just, just uh, it'll basically just smooth out the animation. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion 5 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoyed these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also be sure to check out my Final Cut Pro 10 playlist where there's over 300 tutorials to learn from. Lastly, make sure to check out my website where sell Final Cut Pro 10 plugins. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.